couples were happy. Yeah, I read a couple of studies. Kids are beginning to, yeah. then these younger generations are beginning to reinvent that for themselves. And they're not divorcing at the rate that your generation did and the beginning of my generation did. I think, you know? well, I think our, my generation, or my, my colleagues in, in life, I think we didn't divorce. I think that happened a little bit later. Hmm. Uh, uh, the, the rules were so strict that you, when you married, it was for life. Hmm. I mean, and in fact, our daughter died saying that uh, she felt a failure because she had never married until oh, sweet. just before she died. Oh. Um, that was a failure on her part, hmm. you know, that she hadn't been able to imagine. I mean, it, it was a it was a rough time anyway, and we were sharing a lot of gut stuff that we had never shared, so that's just a piece of it. But we didn't, but the next ones did, and still do to some extent. You're not quite a baby boomer, I think. I think you're just a little bit before oh, no. that generation that rolling. They didn't even give generations a name. Right. Mm. right. No, I was... No, but my I parents... Was, well, what we would call with depression babies. Right. So I've learned so that's, before, Yeah, that's like 10 years And before. independent from my German background right. and, you know, values yeah. of do it yourself or it doesn't get done and the strongest arm is, the hand is the hand of the end of your arm mm -hmm. and that kind of thing. Uh, do no, it's my parents. Make it do. We're just do like it ten years younger. Yeah, yeah. No, I remember my grandmother saving all the aluminum foil, mm -hmm. and being fascinated at how far a piece of aluminum foil could go if you treated it right. <laughs> I was like, that thing has done a lot of work this week. She's like, it's not done. <laughs> it was just it was awesome. I was like, okay, yeah, this is a cool thing to know. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. But my parents' generation, who are just like ten years younger. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, almost half of their peers you know, statistically got divorced in the 1970s mm -hmm. when no fault okay. divorce came in. Okay, that allowed it. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Probably a lot of people would have divorced had that. Yeah. Yeah, no, you had to you had to be crazy or cheating or yeah. demonstrably abusive or something. Yeah. Before then and, and once no fault divorce was established, you could just agree that you didn't like each other anymore. Okay, thank you for clarifying yeah. that. I never put that together. Thanks. Yeah, yeah. It's been a lot of fun talking to you. You too. Listening to you. <laughs> well, you, you have too. such a wide background. I'm thrilled. Just thank my parents. Thrilled. No, no, you, really. They you they did your background. Provided it, you know. Oh, you mean on the ERA? Well, I, anywhere. Oh. You have a philosophy background, which is mind blowing. Oh. That. That would be mind blowing for anybody, and I, I would recommend it. I could just never get into it. I'm <laughs> well, what you've done it. is equally is equally. Well, I'm not degrading you. I'm just saying that you, you yeah. know, we ought to clone you. No, yeah. I am a problematic human being. Well, but, so um, am I. <laughs> just ask Charlie. But, no, again, you can thank my parents for that. I mean, they believed in what I, oh. what I wanted to do. And like, neither helped. of them alive now. No, they're still here. Oh, okay, well, yeah. you say. Well, I mean, they did. Mm. <laughs> I'm not studying anymore. And they still do? You know? Oh, yeah. Yeah, they still encourage you? Oh, yeah, yeah hugely. They are um, sort of... See, my parents didn't know what I was doing with women's rights. Exactly. My mom knew, but kind of, she was very honest. Or she didn't I scared agree. them harder. See, before I got to working on women's rights and sort of social justice issues, I told them I was going to be a poet. And why did that scare them? Because poets, yeah, that's, no, a, that's nice not a thing. Yeah, right. And I'm actually, you know, actually, I did take it quite seriously. But um, you still write? Oh yeah, yeah. So I have been a real coward about publishing, but I'm going to change that soon. I am. Um, I published a, a pharmacology book where a decimal point could make big difference in dosing and. So you go ahead. You, yeah, that's a good so example. So go ahead. <laughs> I mean, step example. out, woman. I know, right? You've got something to share that's mm -hmm. it's, it, it's priceless. Just priceless. It is. You've got to recognize that and do it. Um, and, and, you know, you're, you're videoing various other women. Sure. Um, and I'm recognizing that they're dying faster than I can get to them. Mm. And uh, one who worked with Alice Paul uh, at the Sewell House, and she was, oh gosh, I forgot what, 
I forgot what she did, but she just was magnificent. And she had such a story to tell, and, I, and she was probably my age at the time. I was talking to her quite a ways back. Mm. I said, look, you've got to tell your story. And she said, oh, no, no, no. I said, do you have a tape recorder? No, I don't. I said, get yourself a good little carry tape recorder. Mm -hmm. Put it in the bed next to you. When you wake up in the morning, you have thoughts. Just do your thoughts. Spit your thoughts into there. It doesn't have to be a story. Just do it because what you're saying, they're pearls of wisdom. Why should we reinvent the world? She died without doing that. Oh. Mm -hmm. But you need to do the same thing. Yes, I do. You do. You really do. Yeah. You need to do this. Mm -hmm. And Charlie will video you. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I won't because I would cut your head off and all that stuff. But uh, that's really yeah. important yeah. for you to do that because you have such a wealth of background. Well, I've been gathering she, up so much experience. For yeah, no, but even your philosophy, yeah. I think it has trained your mind in very, very essential ways. Mm -hmm. um, you have so much to offer the rest of us. You know, so I was going to ask you, I mean, in preliminary to that, as I was thinking this through, do you give speeches? No. What? Woman? What? Nobody's ever asked me to. Nobody asked me. I walk up to reporters and I say, someday you're going to want to interview me. And they say, what about right now? <laughs> so they did a whole feature on the ERA in Florida, mm -hmm. right? on TV, you know? Mm. I mean, it's ballsy, you have to be. Just need to get but it's assertive. Yeah. No, I, I do that a lot. Mm. And that's the kind of thing you could do, you know? Um, you don't have to talk to get talk reporters when they're talking to you, but yeah, it does move the movement when yeah. you do it. Um, and when somebody, when I had more energy, and years ago I used to, when a woman's organ, primarily a woman's organization, was giving their annual conference, I would just call them up and say, wouldn't you like a speaker? <laughs> call them up early before the mm -hmm. calendar's full. Mm -hmm. And I could give them 20 minutes of ERA. Mm -hmm. I mean, and I still do that. Yeah. You know, and in September, that's when all these organizations look for speakers. Right. Because they're planning the whole year. So you could do that in September. Just call around. They're happy to get a speaker. Well, I'll have to. I have to see where I'm living in September. That's okay. It's a good question. <laughs> I don't know where I'm going to be, but yeah. But and, and you could write letters to the editor in the New York Times. Well, like we say, right? Half the game is just convincing them that you know what you're doing. Uh, not even. You just yeah. have to have an interesting topic. Hmm. Uh, and though ERA is not exactly timely because Republicans yeah. and the media keep it squelched. Yeah. Um, still, um, people are dying for speakers. Trust me, hmm. interesting speakers like yourself, you could carry on for more than an hour, I'm sure. They usually allot you 30 minutes and then Q and A. Yeah, I know. But um, yeah. promise me you'll think about that. I anyway. will completely think about that. I mean, why would you Where? keep your light under a bushel if you have to get biblical? <laughs> <You know>? <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously, yeah, no, you have so much well, thank you. talent. Um, and I don't mean to embarrass you, but, um, and I don't say this to people, um, it's not my spiel, but um, I have a lot of experience in evaluating people, you know, giving recommendations, 250 a year, you know, for my students to go to grad school or whatever. But uh, aside from that, I just have a hunch, the important thing that you have is, um, and I'm not saying it in any special way, but the important thing that you have is a uh, a wide perspective, mm -hmm. which I don't have, most people don't have, of many things, many, many, many things. But of course I focus on women's issues and men's, because what happens to women happens to men. Sure. Um, that that wide perspective is most unusual, mm -hmm. most unusual. And I think particularly as women could benefit from hearing from you big time. Well, you know, because we read the blogs and it's all about this police, you know, this police report or, you know, who married who or whatever. No, 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 you're much deeper than that. 
Mm. You're much better than that. Well, blog articles have to be short. Well, yeah, yeah. but I mean, they're, they're, nonetheless, yeah. read any article. It's usually focused on one. I mean, I love articles that go far afield, mm. you know, and, and make associations that I never thought of. Yeah. Stuff. You do that. You do that automatically. You do it seamlessly. Thanks. No, I'm not, not bullshitting. I know. I know. You, you don't seem like the kind of person who does that. <laughs> oh, I'm leaving it in. <laughs> no, no. You get to say that. This isn't going on TV. No, I don't. Oh, on nobody's ever told you what I'm telling you. It's a mistake. No. Yeah, It's a I... mistake. Because we only, you know, women don't run for office because other people don't urge them to. Men, oh, I'm entitled to that. I know everything. Right. Okay, we're yeah. not raised that way. Yeah, but that's another place you'd be excellent too, as a as a legislator. They have this kind of shyness reflex. It's it's uh, gets in the way. Well, but, yeah. Try your wings with this kind of thing, and you'll get over it. Mm. I was, a, you know, a thumb sucking, skinny, freckled faced kid. What did I know yeah. as a kid? But I learned if you step out, say these things, and do these outrageous things, things happen. You get respect, mm -hmm. and you have so much to offer. Speak before women's groups in particular. They need you. I need you. <laughs> <laughs> well, if I move to Florida, you might get me. Well, it'd be great. It'd yeah. be great. But I mean, I need uh, all of us standing out there alone, hanging from the you know yeah. from the yard arm, uh, and and. This pertains to legislators that you work hard. If you've ever worked for Canada, you get them on board. Uh, women desert them after they're on. And these four women, are, the feminists that they've got elected, are swinging by the yard arm. And then they need a new staff, and they don't have people. Not there. only that, but there's, there's this great wall against them. That's why they're anti-ERA, because yeah. the men are. Right. And they vote against it. Yeah. And even those who tell me, you don't have to tell me about sex discrimination. I know all about it. And they'll say it angrily like mm -hmm. that. But they won't vote for ERA. Mm -hmm. Because the women who supported them to get elected walked away from them? No. That what I'm saying is uh, that um, in or, the politics within the politics, their buddies, oh. they have to, men conform right. better than we women do yeah. in, in issues like that. And so in order to gain the trust right. of the men... You have to be a team player. Oh, you do, yeah. And you just do your little thing on the side until mm -hmm. they begin to say, oh, you know, maybe mm -hmm. she's got something. Yeah. You know, I want I the respect that. of those four 1940s kinds of guys up the commission. Uh, and you can. Yeah. And, and anybody watching this can. Mm -hmm. You just have to be willing to say... I don't care what happens. I can deal with that. You know, and if they don't like me, that's probably their problem, but I'm okay with me. Mm -hmm. And you yeah. probably just have to be knocked around long enough and keep picking yourself up. Yeah. You see, get tougher that way. You do. And or at least less surprised. I don't think it's tough. I think it's less surprised. Yes, because yeah. we're not skilled at that yet. Mm -hmm. Till we become skilled. But you have a monumental amount of, of talent skill and potential. Thanks, but this no. isn't about me. <laughs> oh, not this. No, but I, I want you to know. I mean, yeah, well, thank you. I want you to know that you, you need to get out there and spread those ideas. And just like we talked beforehand and here, mm -hmm. uh, this is a crucial learning experience for me. <laughs> you know, and it would be for anybody yeah. who's interested in this kind of thing, because a lot of people just get glazed on, you know, mm -hmm. over this kind of thing. But you got it, baby. Thanks. You got it. Well, we'll see. Use it. Happens. Use it. We'll see and I don't do. wait. Okay. September, you can get talks. Why are you moving in September? This year is a little bumpy. Well, you got another September next year. I know. <laughs> it comes every year. It comes every year. <laughs> right about the same time, right between August and October. I right know, there. honey. <laughs> well, I've, kept you, I've kept you too long. Haven't no, ma'am. No, okay. I just, um, I just, we can't keep talking about me. Well, it's really you can't. <laughs> okay, no. well, turn that thing off so we can. Yeah. Well, thank you again, a whole big bunch for giving me your afternoon and mm. and making this possible. Hi, very. <clears throat> Do you think my jewelry is food?
You do, don't you? That's kind of cute. Well, I've sat out there and they've picked my toes, so I guess so. 